Hey guys, how's it going? It's Domer again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today, I'm going to continue and do another Magic League video with particle system. And this time around, I'm going to go through multiple exercises. One of them is going to be to basically add meshes. So when we're using the ML Spatial Mapper, the Spatial Mapper is actually going to create a mesh automatically for us. So I'm going to create a class that is going to basically look at the meshes that are created by using the track ID that gets added to a dictionary. And then once I have that information, I can determine which thing I want to collide with. But I also found out that that wasn't actually going to work really well. So I have two scenarios that I'm going to run through. I'm going to run through the first scenario that I just mentioned. And then on the second scenario, we're basically going to use the 3D colliders on the particle system themselves and then change some of the settings to make it perform better. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing in this video, which is to tie to the mesh, basically the ML spatial mapper to determine whenever we generate a new mesh. So if you haven't used this ML spatial mapper before, make sure that you check out the scene, which is called meshing. And that's one of the examples that Magic Leap provides. So what I'm going to do is we're going to be tying into the ML spatial mapper, just like I said. And the way that this works is it's actually going to generate a mesh from the surroundings. So what I want to do is I want to continue on, on the particle systems that I showed you before. But not only I want to generate particles, but I also want to make sure that those particles are colliding with the environment that we're creating. So what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be creating a new scene. And then we're going to be using a particle system that what I created before. And then we're basically going to bind to some of the actions that the ML spatial mapper generates when it's creating meshes. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our scene. So first thing, I'm going to copy this because we're going to need it. And in fact, I think Magic Leap has that already in there. And you can see that they have a prefab. So we, we can probably just tie into that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into scenes. And the last thing that I work on was the earth rotating. Basically, it was the earth rotating with the rocket controller. So that's the one that I'm going to clone from. Just going to clone that. And then this one, what I'm going to say is I'm going to say that it's a particle system. Particle system with we can say ML spatial mapper. And I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't gone through this example. So this is all going to be experimentation. So I'm really excited to see what happens at the end because I haven't really, normally I run through the demos that I create, but this one I just have the idea. I don't know where it's going to get us. So let's see if this is going to work. So the first thing that I'm going to do is we have already a particle system here. And I show you this on the previous video. It basically generates particles. We're colliding with this plane. So what I'm going to do is basically the mesh that the special mapper generates is the one that is going to collide with these particles. So I'm basically going to generate a very big, a very big particle system. Actually, it's going to be much bigger than what we have right now. And then we're going to basically see if that starts colliding with the meshes as we add them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and we can just copy this one right here. And then I'm going to paste it at the end and then we can remove the rocket. I don't need the rocket. I also don't need the platform because we're going to use, use basically use the particle system. And that's exactly what I wanted to see. I wanted to make sure that that was. And I'm going to set it as 000 because I want to make sure that, you know, where we're starting, that's where we're going to see it. And in fact, I'm going to offset it a little bit to you know, on the on the Z axis, because I don't want it to be right in front of us. We can probably just do about 0.1. I think it's negative negative 0.1. It's it's enough. And then I'm also going to make it a little bit bigger, especially because of what we're going to be testing. I want to make sure that, you know, we can see it and it's it's actually colliding. And so what I'm going to do is let me just make a couple of changes in here. We can still do that. The size. I am going to basically change the the angle that we have right now. Looks like we're using a very, we can probably just change this to be a sphere. There we go, that's what I want. And that's actually looking really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to change, let's go ahead and change the size a tiny bit. I don't want it to be that big either. Probably something like that would work. 
and then I want it I want to basically be the particles lived for a longer period of time so let me see so we have a star delay we have the star size we also have the simulation speed so the other thing that I could change is if you look at the radius the radius pretty it's actually pretty small so if I go let me set it to something like see what happens if I do I think something like that works and let me change the simulation speed okay so I think I think that works and let me set it back to 20 okay so I think 20 works and let's see the size over time I think that I think what we have is it's fine I don't need to change anything like that so I want to make it much bigger so let me see star size lifetime so what if we set it to something like 40 and kind of see how that is affecting it we can do something much bigger there we go that's kind of what I was looking for but then the particles are like way 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 too big and I'm, I'm gonna go you know you know a little bit you know maybe go down a little bit more because I want to see that this is colliding and then instead of going in all directions you can see that the physics is actually going in all directions we can change the gravity modifier so let me change this to a number one and that's way way too high let's do 0 0.001 and I think that's still way too high let's do because we're dealing with augmented reality I think it tends to these numbers tend to be much smaller so I think that works that's exactly what I wanted to see and what I'm expecting to see though is I want to see that this is falling in place and this is actually looking more like water and in fact we could change some of the color to make it look like that so what I'm gonna do is let's go into color over lifetime and you can see that I have you know I have wine here could in fact change it to maybe something like a blue you know a blue color and it should start changing here in a second and there we go you can kind of see some of that blue showing now and we can also change the red color there maybe a lighter blue would work there we go and then let's go ahead and change the yellow I'm gonna do the same thing let's go to a lighter a much lighter blue and something like that would work there we go and then looks like I have a yellow here so I'm gonna remove that one and I just want it to be blue all the way across and then maybe at the end we can get to black which is what what is doing right now then I think it's looking you know it's looking like water big sizes here and then the particles falling so I think that works let me let me see if we if we go down a little bit more there we go something about maybe 0 0.0 see 0 0.025 would be a good number there we go that's perfect and then okay I think that's fine so then the next thing that I want to do is we can call probably this water and just call it water particles thing that works and then we can just make it be part of the content so the other thing that I want to do is I want to add a, ma a ML mapper so it's called the ML special mapper so let's go ahead and add that and I'm gonna add it right in the content so it's gonna be right there and we're gonna be a zero 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 and this is gonna ask us what our mesh pairing is gonna be we're gonna say that our mesh pairing it's gonna be content and then if we go into advanced it's going to give us some other options so if you wanted to change the queue size and to be honest I haven't really messed with some of these settings but I will in the future as I learn more about these components for now all I really want to do is just generate a, basically the meshes that are generated automatically for us I think that works so right now this doesn't really help us because right now it's going to generate a mesh but we won't be able to tie the colliders that we have in here so if you go here and you go to where it says collisions so what I want to do is I want to add a new plane every time a new mesh gets added and that's basically going to be what we're colliding with and so to do that we're going to have to tie it into an event that the ML spatial mapper generates every time a new mesh gets added so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new script to handle that and like I said I'm, I'm really experimenting here so let's see what we can come up with and then we can probably just call this one ML mesh listener and then what I can do is add that to the ML special mapper 
and it's going to say that the behavior while compiling, okay, it looks like it's still compiling. So let me make sure that that is compiling fine. Let me go into it. And I'm going to go under, there we go. So what I got to do, let me make sure that I did get at it. I didn't get at it yet. So we'll just say ML, and then I have the ML mesh listener, which we have now. And then what I'll do, I'll just add a require, basically a requirement, which is going to be, and we can probably just do it here. It's going to be require component, and then this is going to be the ML special mapper. And it's probably not going to know what it is because we need to bring in one of the using statements. There we go. So one of the things that I need to do is I need to bind to some of the components. So to do that, I need to do a private. And then I'll just say ML special mapper. And then this is, this is going to be a private variable. I can just do underscore special mapper mapper and then there we go and then what i'll do is we can just get that from the start method i just say get component ml special mapper and i think that that works let me just check one more thing here just to make sure that we're gonna be fine okay so i think we i think we're good so if you look in here and look for actions you're gonna see that every time the special mapper adds a mesh so you're seeing this method is going to have a track a trackable id and which therefore it's going to be an action so there's going to be an event that gets emitted when that event gets emitted we're going to know what got added so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tie to this and because this is public i can basically add a method that tracks that the handles that event let me go and look at this trackable id just to make sure and looks like i can get to it for some reason let me close out of vs code and then I'll go into assets and then it'll generate the new C sharp project. Sometimes I have to do that in order for things to just get. If this doesn't work, it, it's okay. We can still make it work. And we can just say go to definition. So we just don't have any definition for that for some reason. Let me let me go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and I'll just do trackable ID and then we can just say XR Unity. And then that probably it's gonna get us to that. Of course, I need to enable my internet. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and, and bind to those methods. So I'm gonna I'm gonna basically add a new property here, and I'm gonna say mesh add it. And I am pretty sure that it's gonna be the same type. It's gonna be a trackable ID that gets passed in. And then let me see if I can get to it. And then trackable ID. And then let me see if I can get to it from here. If I pick definition. Oh, there we go. So that worked this time. So we don't need to go online to find it. So this is what I wanted to know. I wanted to know what components were part of this object. So it looks like this has basically a trackable ID. It's a singleton. I also got a hit. I get hash code. And then there's really not much in this other than I know what the ID is of the trackable component. So let's see what we can do, what we can do with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say ML special mapper, and then we're going to bind to that. So I'm just going to say mesh add it. So I'm going to do plus and equal, and then we're going to say that I'm going to bind to this method. And if you're looking here, it's basically taking, taking that action. So what I want to do is I want to know if I can get the mesh, and that's something that I haven't, that I haven't really done before. So let me see if there is a method in the mapper that is going to allow us to get so it looks like it's creating a mesh id to game object map so this map might have what we need and in fact if we go back to here and we look at this oh okay i see what it's doing so if we look in here it's basically just creating a dictionary of game objects and that game object is going to give us the it's going to give us a mesh i was just reading this and i didn't read the dictionary so one of the things that i can do here is i can say okay so if that mesh was added and it is in the dictionary, I want to get that item. So I'm going to say trackable ID. And this is going to return a game object. So I'm just going to say game object. And then this is going to be the game object that we are tracking, which is going to be the new mesh. And so that should give us that information. So the other thing that I'm going to need here is I'm going to need the particle system that we're creating. And I'm just going to say this is a particle system. This one is going to be serializable because I need to basically associated in the inspector. So I'm just going to make it private, but it's going to be a serializable field. 
and then it's complaining because okay because we're using a variable that it's already so we can just say colliding colliding particle system I think that that's unique enough and then what I'll do here is I'll do a couple of changes in here so this is gonna be so we need to get the collision component right and if you look at it we have a module that is called collisions and we can also look and say that and see if we have a plane so it looks like we need to set a plane so sets a collection planes to be used with the particle system index specify which plane which plane to set let me see if I need to if I need to do something different to be able to add the plane and set plane get plane so I think we're gonna have to keep track of how many planes we have it looks like we have the maximum number of planes that it is possible to set as colliders I think that works and set plane so let's go ahead and track how many planes we have so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say private or just say in planes or we can just say meshes well let's actually do it let's actually do it differently because we're gonna know we're gonna know which how many we have so if I look in here this is gonna have a count so let's go ahead and get the count from that I hate to add another variable and then it's just gonna make it hard to maintain so what I'll do I'll just get the count of how many items we have and this is gonna be basically our current count so and we'll just say minus one because it needs to be index zero and if you're looking here this is gonna take an index so it's gonna be collisions and let me it's gonna be plane and then set plane and specify which plane to set so at index zero we want to basically create a new plane so I'm just gonna say get plane set plane and then I'm gonna grab the current count and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the transform that we're going to be binding this to so I'm not sure if the mesh that gets added has you know what type of collider it has to be honest I don't I don't really remember but what I can do is I'm just gonna say that this is gonna get a collider regardless of what it is so I'll just say collider and then collider and then we'll just say game object get component and then we can just say collider there we go and I'm not sure this is, if this is gonna work looks like it is gonna work so what we can do now is I can say that this is gonna be the transform there we go so what's gonna happen is every time we add a new mesh we're going to be basically getting the trackable object that got added to the mesh dictionary then we're gonna get the collider and then we're gonna get the count of how many items we have currently in the dictionary so if we have one item this is gonna give us zero if we have two items it's gonna give us one and so on and that's gonna help us because I'm gonna be able to set the plane which it's going to allow me to get collisions against the meshes that it's creating so I think this is gonna work just fine so the other thing that I I don't know if it's gonna work if because I haven't tested it what I'm gonna do here is I want to make sure that this is this is set if no I'm just gonna go I'm just gonna return so you say if collider equal to no then we can just return for now because I, I want to make sure that this is not blowing up and at least we can we can look at the experience and then I think I think for now just to get just to get things rolling this should be this should give us enough information of things if things are working the other thing that I normally do is you want to make sure that we call on destroy well we actually bound to the method call on destroy and then we just basically remove the bounds of the mesh getting at it so it's gonna be minus so that we can remove that basically listening to that event and then I think that should do it let me just make sure everything looks good let's go ahead and go back to so I can close out of Chrome we don't need to Google anything and we can go back to unity now and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bound the particle system that we created to the mapper that we basically the object that we just created which is the ML mesh listener and then that should give us basically everything that we everything that we need so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build this so let's get it built and then push to my device so I'm gonna say build settings let's make sure that I add this scene I'm gonna uncheck the earth and rocket controller 
and then I'll just do a build and run. I have my device already connected, so I should be able to see if everything is working. And this is going to get pushed. So I'll basically continue the video as soon as we get it running on my device. So there are a couple of things that I realized as I was running this on the device. One of them was that the plane collisions is actually not working really well. So I changed it to use 3D world collisions. So I'll show you some of the changes that we need to do in the code. And also I have a video here that I want to show you how it runs. So I'm just going to play it. And in this video, I'm showing you that I'm basically using the ML special mapper. And you can see that the particles are colliding with the world. The, it's actually colliding with the table. You can see that it's hitting you know, some of the edges of the table and then they're falling. It's really hard to see with this video, but the collision is happening. And I also have bouncing enabled in, in some of those, basically in some of those collisions. So let me show you some of the things that I had to do to make this work. So the first thing that I had to do is I couldn't use the plane the way that we coded it. So even though this is right here, I'm not probably going to use it because it's actually not working really well. The, the reason why it's not working really well is because it actually doesn't know if it's a plane and then it doesn't know the orientation of the plane. So the particle collision doesn't really look right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drop this class because we, we don't need it, but I think I gave you enough information. If you needed to get trackable information, if you needed to get the game object, I think this could be useful for that. So in fact, I could leave it here. And then if you need to use it for another reason, then you're more than welcome to use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, let me just comment out the stuff that I think you could use. So things that you could use could be the collider and also the game object. But the thing that I had to do on the, on the water particles, which is what I named this. Let's go ahead and, and take a look at the particles themselves. You can see that I actually lowered the amount of particles that we're getting. I think it was way too high. And for some reason, Magic Leap was, was running really slow. And I didn't really need that many particles as well. And I don't know if it was the particle count or if it was some of the changes that I, you know, that some of the things that I had in the collisions. So I had work collision turned on, but I had this set to high. So one of the things that I did is I changed the max collision ships from, I think it was a thousand or 10,000 before. And I also changed it to low. And this is actually what's gonna allow you to do collisions in real world with, you know, any kind of 3D objects that are in the scene. So this actually works really well because I don't have to handle, you know, what thing am I colliding with? And, and in fact, you could actually do that here if you wanted to say that you want to set the layer that you want to you want to collide with we could basically just set a layer on the meshes that we only want to collide with and then basically enable that here and then disable everything else so that's how we can handle that i wouldn't do it the way that i showed you initially but i think it's really good exercise to go through that basically discovery process so that's everything that i wanted to show you guys and also keep in mind that i'm going to be putting this in github and you can download the project and try it on your own thank you guys all right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.